What's going on guys? In today's video I got tagged by Hobgees to do my top three gaming possessions that I own. As many of you know, I'm a huge gamer. Have been since I was a wee lad. Uh, with that being said, I couldn't really pick just three, so we sort of have five. So let's go ahead and jump into that. Alright, so as many of you know, when I was a little guy, I uh, really fell in love with the original Xbox. And uh, with that being said, there was one game that always eluded me because I was a poor teenager. And I couldn't quite afford it, and then after a while it became quite rare. As an adult, I finally decided to break down and buy Steel Battalion. Not only did I buy Steel Battalion, I bought it the best way possible. This was brand new in box. There's a link in the description, uh, or up in a tag of me unboxing it. Got some serious dust on here. Um, that shows you how often I play it though because this is a pain in the ass to take out of the box and set up and do all that stuff because you got to screw on some pieces and do a bunch of stuff and it is very annoying and tedious to set up. But with that being said, this is a one of a kind experience. You can never get this experience anywhere else but the original Xbox. So for me, uh, when this came out initially I think it was $200 back in 2003 it was only on the Xbox, and then eventually they were going to release a secondary edition on the PS2, which is why you have the blue button controllers, and the green button is for the Xbox, but then eventually did not go to the PS2, so then they used those blue button controllers on the second batch of Steel Battalion, which came with um, the same game, but then there is an online secondary game to Steel Battalion, which no longer works, because Steel Battalion's offline, but um, so I ended up paying $250 for this bad boy brand new in 2016 Christmas of 2016 I paid 250 shipped for this and the guy threw in a bunch of extra games so I encourage you to watch this unboxing it's a really good video I put a lot of effort into it that's a that was probably the initial video that I put a lot of effort into on the channel so it really shows you how far the channel has come to watch some of my older stuff I occasionally go back myself and watch some of that stuff but so Steel Battalion such a cool game I am so grateful to have this in my collection I uh, uh, you know, I really do need to put some more time and love into this game, but um, cannot recommend this game enough if you got the scratch to do it. Because uh, once you buy this, it's kind of just something you keep. You don't get rid of it. It's just kind of cool to look at. Uh, it's just kind of cool to play. The, t the controller is tedious to set up, but it is. It, it's kind of. It's almost. It's almost a game in itself to set it up. Because then you just sit there and you're just playing with it and touching all the buttons, flipping all the toggles and stuff. And when you get into the mech, it's really. It's just a. It's a one of a kind of experience because you have to sit there and flick on the wipers and the lights and then you know the gas and the fuel cut off and just all these little toggle switches it's just it's such a crazy experience if you guys want to see a dedicated video of that uh, like maybe kind of like a mini review for the controller and the game or both uh, definitely leave a comment down below if that's something you'd like to see because I kind of want to do that now so that's one thing all right now with that being said uh, when I was a wee lad I had to buy my own consoles after a while, um, so I had a paper route for many years, uh, about four years, and uh, one day I just up and right decided that uh, I was buying an Xbox, and um, this is still my original one, it's hooked up, it's not actually in here. Uh, this, is, this is probably my second most prized possession, that's the third. The uh, reason this is being the second is because I earned this, like I straight paid for this. I you know, sweated in the summertime to save up for it and froze my butt off in the wintertime doing paper route to buy this and like I, I truly earned this. So this is like a really prized possession of mine and I actually, I just really genuinely cherish having this because this is like the first uh, big boy purchase that I made, you know what I mean? So this is really cool to still have this and I don't think, like there's no amount of money that would make me get rid of this because this is truly just something I really do cherish in my collection. So. Um, very grateful to still have this and I just all the hours I spent playing Halo with buddies uh, down in my parents basement <laughs> it was like that 70s show when I was younger I mean we had a mini uh, freezer down there and a fridge just soda um, soda out the ass ice pops out the ass Doritos uh, you know like those little potato skins and mozzarella sticks and just just always hanging out playing video games in the basement and um, you know We'd play Halo all the time, then we'd play Fantasy Star Online all the time. We would play Blood Wake, Brute Force, just like all, and uh, Mech Assault, just so many good times. And I like I remember 
the first time I, I hooked up to Xbox Live with my buddy Jordan. Um, like just a memory that I truly cherish. Um, you know, I hooked it up, and then like I remember this one funny time. Uh, my dad is a little bit older; he's uh, 65, so I'm only 28. So he had me pretty late in life, so he's getting ready to retire. So the internet and cell phones and <laughs> new fancy technology that he just quite doesn't understand uh, frustrates him. So I remember one t he would not let me have Xbox Live. He didn't want to drill holes in the house and didn't want to do this and that. So it just wasn't happening. So one day I had the brilliant idea of convincing my sister who's older to drive me to Best Buy. I bought a 100, 100 foot ethernet cable, ran it from the basement up the steps, over to the computer, plugged it into the monitor, only at nighttime when he wasn't awake. So one day we had crabs. If you're from Maryland, you know that eating crabs here is a huge thing. So we're eating crabs that day. It was like 4th of July or Memorial Day or I don't know. One of those holidays where you would eat crabs. And you, you dip it in the old bay and the butter and it's salty. So he woke up in the middle of the night thirsty. So he went downstairs. <laughs> I laugh so hard every time I think about it. He went downstairs to get a drink because, you know, he was thirsty because he ate the salty dinner or whatever. And um, <laughs> it's going across the hallway. Here's the steps and then here's the hallway. And the computer's way over here past the kitchen. And um, <laughs> he just trips on this. I hear him coming down the steps, and I was like, all right, maybe he won't notice the wire. Maybe he's just like half half awake and he's checking the door, the lights, or I don't know. So he trips on the wire, straight falls on his face. And my dad's like 6'4, so he's a big dude. And uh, just like a huge thud, just like, Poof! and I'm just like, oh my God. And I'm sitting there, I just turn and look at Jordan, I'm like, fucked because I knew he was gonna bitch about it and sure enough he did and then this was probably 04 I would say and then not 05 Christmas but then 06 Christmas he eventually ended up drilling me a hole through the ceiling from the basement so that I could hook up my 360 online and I remember playing Gears online and just so many good times with the Xbox brand uh, for me the Xbox brand is was just something really cool back in the day. I mean, it was when this came out, when the Xbox came out, it was the powerhouse. It was, it was, it was the continuation of Sega. Sega during the 90s had the Tude, and it was the power system, and it was the teenage system, it was the mature system, and then same with the Saturn, and then same with the Dreamcast. Dreamcast had those edgy commercials, and then the Saturn commercials were real tooty and in your face, and then Xbox picked up the mantle from Sega, and like. They were the mature console, the adult console, the power console, the the man console, and like that's what I liked because I was a teenager and it grabbed me and it was just like, yeah, this is the badass console and like it has the power. But then like the 360 came out and it was it was the most powerful console at its time for a year, and then eventually the PS3 came out and at first the PS3 wasn't as powerful and then it caught up eventually, but. Um, you know, to me, the Xbox has really s strayed away from what they uh, originally were, and uh, it's kind of sad because, you know, if you're subscribed to the channel or you're new, definitely check out the OG Xbox exclusive master list that I'm making. It's going to be a collector's guides of sort. Um, there are 264 North American exclusives for the original Xbox, and I'm working on a 360 master list as well. I pretty much already have the master list, and I have already 150 the original or the 360 exclusives in my collection so with that all being said I mean what happened to the Xbox they used to buy them they used to create them they used to get the exclusives because the 360 at the beginning half of the gen was the uh, you know the the top dog so to speak it had the most system sales now just like the PS4 does and it gets Bloodborne and all those other exclusives but so the Xbox I mean to me I mean, do you need to get Peter Molyneux back, and do you need to get Peter Moore back, and, you know, do, do we need to get Seamus Blackley back to have the Xbox go back to the way it was? I mean, like, the Xbox One is good, don't get me wrong, but I mean, it's just, it's just a far cry from what the original Xbox and what the initial 360 was. I mean, they were just a gamer's console. But with that being said, this is definitely my second most prized possession. Uh, no amount of money can make me get rid of this. Alright guys, sorry about that. Somebody was at the door, so I had to uh, 
go ahead and take care of that. So my third and most prized possession, or I guess my first favorite and most prized possession would be my original Super Nintendo. Um, this is still the original box, original everything in here, foam, instructions, poster, the receipt, everything's in here. Um, this is my most prized possession in my gaming collection. This is what started it off for me. This is what did it for me. Donkey Kong Country is my favorite game of all time. Nothing will ever take that away from me. Nothing will ever dethrone this. This is my original game that I played. It's just my favorite game. Just everything about it. The music, the graphics, the atmosphere of the levels. Just everything about Donkey Kong Country is my favorite. Uh, to me, there is no better platformer. I'm just going to go ahead and say that. I like Donkey Kong Country 1, 2, and 3 more than I like any of the Mario games. Um, go ahead and get mad about that if you want to, but to me, they're just better games. That's just me. It's probably just because it was the first game I ever played, so I'm hardcore nostalgic for it, but Donkey Kong. So there's kind of a second part to this. When I was very young and we moved to a couple cities over, basically, um, we ended up going out for, I guess it was around Christmas time, and back at Toys R Us, now they're sadly shutting down. I used the Toys R Us dollars to buy some games that I had. There was basically gift cards before they had gift cards. If anybody remembers the Toys R Us dollars, those were kind of cool. Um, but yeah, so I went in there with my mom. Uh, I believe it was my mom, or it could have been my dad. But either way, I went in and bought um, Mortal Kombat 3, and I was under the age of 10, so realistically probably shouldn't have had this game, but I ended up buying this. Um, it is M-rated. By today's standards, this is nothing, but back in the 90s, this was pretty brutal still. I mean, this had blood in it, and you were straight up cutting people and shooting people and freezing people and get over here and doing all that crazy stuff. So this copy is a little beat up at this point. I'm not going to lie. Like, the bottom has a serious crease down the middle and this and that, but this is still my original copy. Like all three of these things like they will never leave my collection even if I give up collecting and giving up YouTube and this and that like these are things that like no money could buy this like I, I, I honestly mean that these are some of the most important things to me and you're probably wondering why the fuck is Kirby's Avalanche one of your most prized possessions so it actually even has the little hang tag here that I can't take off because some jackass put that on here and as a little kid I didn't care but now I care but it kinda makes it more mine and Oso Jiggly actually used this weird word to me the other day and I'm sure he'll comment on it uh, about Japanese how they like blemish things because it gives it more characters so but this is Kirby's Avalanche it's uh, basically a Tetris clone uh, it's a Puyo Puyo game now that I'm older I know that um, Kirby uh, Dreamland was one of the first games I ever played aside from Donkey Kong at a babysitter's house on the NES I saw this, I was like, oh my god, that's the game I played all those years ago. Turns out this was Kirby Tetris, so it wasn't. But because I spent like $40 on this, 40 Toys R Us dollars, uh, I still had to play it, enjoy it, and love it. And, um, you know, I still go back and play this every once in a while. And it still puts a serious smile on my face because it just reminds me of sitting in front of that very tube TV when I was... It's okay. Um, sitting in front of that very tube TV that I still have to this day, 27 inch RCA, um, and playing the crap out of these Super Nintendo games and not having a care in the world. So for me, this is, this, you know, these are, you know, most people don't even like the Donkey Kong series that much and that Mario's better, this, that, and the third, and this ain't a super great game, and this isn't even super gory anymore by today's standards, but these are just like some of the serious, fond memories that I have with gaming. I just nothing can replace them nothing can replace these to me these are the, the best things in my collection and um, all right so with all that being said we uh, those are my three top prized possessions in my collection uh, hopefully you enjoyed this video it's a little long but you know me I love talking about games so that's why you hopefully stick around um, so I got called to do this challenge by Hob G's he got uh, picked by Gore the movie guy which I think he was the originator of the challenge not the original time but you know what I'm saying and Power Player Paul called him both at the same time to do the challenge. He picked me, um, so I'm going to go ahead and pick... Uh, I'm going to go ahead and pass this on to MC Murr. So I want you, my man, to pick three of your top prized possessions in your collection, whether they be from when you are a kid or just 
like Steel Battalion where I got something that I wanted as a kid and all that good stuff. So MC Mer, the torch is passed to you. Go ahead and pass that to somebody else after you're done. And as always, guys, peace out for now. Till next time. Come here, you mother. <laughs>